So we are back on my dream of 4x4 Nova build. And in this episode, we are going to carry on doing this for the drive system. But since the last episode, I have been doing a few little bits. I'm going to show you. So I've finished both arms. Obviously, in the last episode, I just did one. I did the other one off camera because it's basically repeating it. So these arms have been made shorter than standard. These are Calibra Cavalier rear arms. Basically, I made it shorter so I can make the car narrower and I can make it the standard width with the bigger wheels. So from the outside, it's going to look original. And exactly the same for the subframe. So I've moved the outer bracket inwards. I've made some new ones. So it's basically, I think from memory, it's pulled the arms in 70 mil aside, so 140 mil overall, which will allow me to run nice big wheels on the standard width. So today's episode, I do want to continue this. Obviously, we still need drive shafts. And this subframe still isn't going to fit. So I need to cut this down still. Cross here, for example. I'm going to cut these mounts off and then start making my own. I've also been buying a few bits. So I've bought this transfer box. Now, this is off a really rare Calibra 4x4 naturally aspirated, not a turbo. So it's the same as what I've already got. So I've got a spare one of these now because I've got two gearboxes, two axles, two transfer boxes, two props, three sets of drive shafts. So I should be okay on that front. And I've bought a set of gear cables out of a modern Astra J, I think it was, 1.4. These are the five-speed ones and the selector, as well as I bought an F17 gearbox out of a Vectra just to nick the linking bit off. And this bracket, which I don't think I'm going to be using, but I can use it to mock up something else because my gearbox don't have the holes for these. So if you haven't watched the first video of what I've been doing, I've basically, this is the standard axle. This is a modified one. I've made this arm smaller, I've pulled the whole lot in, moved this bracket, and I've used the existing bracket here. So that gives us another problem, which is the drive shaft. So the drive shafts are too long. I'm going to take them apart and see what I can do with them. I need to make them a bit shorter. So this is the original drive shaft which I took out, which is in probably the worst condition, which is why I'm starting on this one. So the boot clips look original. I'm going to knock them off to start off with. So I'll just use a hammer and chisel for this. It's not particularly hard work. You just have to take your time and it will eventually come off. I then slice the boots with a utility knife and pull them off just so I can see it inside a little bit better, just to try and work out exactly how to get them apart. And sadly, this is where things start to go wrong for me. So we have a big problem now. Basically, these drive shafts, I can't get them apart without damaging the CV joints. Now I'll explain. So, to get the shaft out, the circlip is on the back side of the CV joint, not this side, where it normally is on a front wheel drive, it's on the back side, so it's on this side, essentially. So, to get it off, you've got to take this collar off the CV joint, which actually comes as part of the boot. Now, this is like knocked on, it's like a very tight press fit with an O-ring. This is the problem. Now, they're not coming off, obviously, I've destroyed that trying to get it off, assuming these are easily to get readily available, thinking... Like a lot of things, you can get these with the CV boots. However, they're discontinued for these Cavaliers. Calibras, the lot. I've got the part numbers. I've got all the superseded part numbers. I've got everything I can find online. There's not a single one on the internet for sale that I can see. I think it comes complete with the joint, basically. But the problem is, obviously, say I put a shortened shaft in this, which is obviously what I need to do. I still need to get the clip on the back. And I can't possibly do that without taking this on and off because you can't physically get the shaft out. So, what do I do? Well, I've got a couple of options. Option one is not to use that metal collar. Basically, obviously it's a tight press fit, goes on the end like that, but it does, in a way, stop all the balls falling out, the cage falling out the inside of the joint. However, because it doesn't go lock to lock, and the wheels are at a constant angle, Will they come out? Probably not. So I might be able to get away with, as crude as it sounds, literally just putting a boot on the outside of that and then clamping it on like a normal, like you normally would on a normal CV joint. I'm not sure. I'd like to try that. That's one option. Option two is, again, a little bit crude. These need shortening anyway. I could cut the shaft in the middle, take both boots off. I don't need to worry about the cages. Yeah. And then get somebody to machine a sleeve what goes over this, cut 74 millimeter out of the drive shaft, press the two back together, weld them up. Obviously, with new boots on first, I have to keep a bit of wet rag around these. 
it's not ideal but these are really rare and like i said i cannot find these are rare second hand that is can't find any new ones on the internet whatsoever i've looked all over the world everywhere cannot find them so if you know of any brand new cv joints for cavalier gsi 4x4 or a cavalier turbo they're the same well, let me know i can't find them it looks like they've been no longer available from Vauxhall for a very very long time so yeah that's one of my issues so but because of that i am going to crack on with shortening the subframe and i'll worry about this another day i think so because of the shaft situation we're going to go back to this subframe like i've just said so this is still physically too wide to fit in a nova even though i've shortened where these go i still need to shorten the entire thing so what i'm going to do i'm going to lock the ends off here and here and i'm also going to cut these mounts off here but i'm going to leave a little bit of material just so i've got a bit of a reference point because i'm going to make some new um rubber mounted brackets which go on this but just something a little bit smaller because i think they're overkill and that's it but let's get the grinder out so the subframe must be at least three or four millimeters thick and if i'm honest i made this look quite easy on this time lapse it took me absolutely ages to cut it off i went through loads of cutting discs and loads of grind discs grinding all the weld off afterwards and in the end, I decided to actually lop off all the original mount and I'm just going to make completely new stuff. Right, now the end's cut off, I need to plug the hole up somehow. So I use a hole saw and cut a little bit of steel out, which is two millimeters thick, just to plug the end up, similar to how Vauxhall did back in the day. I press it on a bench grinder and weld it into place with the MIG welder. Now it just so happened that I had the perfect size hole saw, which made this job a lot easier. And there we go, that's one side all done and looking at kind of factory once again. Right, so it's 24 hours later. I've had a haircut and the subframe is pretty much done now. So I've cut both sides down, I've blanked the holes up and I've also triangulated the brackets on both sides just to give it a bit of extra strength really. So next problem I've got is the anti-roll bar. Now I've bolted this back up, standard Cleaver, Cavalier, whatever you want to call it, anti-roll bar. But because obviously it's now shorter, going to catch the spring platform now this may not cause an issue i'm not exactly sure where it sits when it's actually on the car however i don't like the idea of it so what i'm going to do i'm going to heat it up here and i'm essentially going to bend this in to make it a 90 degree instead of whatever angle that is so i'm going to take it off i'm going to use an alternative method of heating it so wish me luck so I'm pretty sure this is a big no-no in the engineering world, but what I'm basically doing is using the TIG torch with no filler just to heat up the metal and bend it. Now, I know it's sprung steel. You're probably not meant to heat it up, but it's worth a go. So there we go. We've got a good inch clearance each side now. It's much better. Now, this is probably going to break the first time I use it. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I think it'll be okay. If you think otherwise, let me know in the comments. Now, obviously, I do need to make some kind of linkage up. It should be like a rubber-mounted linkage. Um, they're not the best. I don't like the design. So I'm going to use some rose joints and make something properly. But I can't do that until it's fitted to the car and I've got the ride height set perfectly. Just because I want to make sure it goes exactly where I want it to go and doesn't catch anything. So with that in mind, I think we're going to wrap the video up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm going to be doing loads of Nova work coming up in the next few months. Uh, and in the next episode, we're hopefully going to start fitting this to the Nova SR. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. See you later. Bye-bye.